27. Page number 208. Per the report, the rector, the vice rector, and the registrar were, 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 were taking supplementary salaries in addition to their regular salaries. And I would like to find out, in dollars, the rector was taking $1,000 supplementary, the vice rector $600, and the registrar $333. So, yeah, without the approval of the Ministry of Education, they were directed to contact the Ministry of Edu uh, Education to seek approval, retrospective approval, or refund the total amount, which amounted to 110,877. I want to know whether they have done that and what is the outcome. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, we got this report and my attention was drawn to a letter written from the Ministry of Finance as far back as 2008 that actually granted the Ghana Institute of Journalism to pay such allowances, but what the finance director told me was that they captured it wrongly by tightly salary supplement instead of allowances that were meant for the executive management board for their sittings. So we have consequently asked the governing council or forwarded to the governing council who, uh, which actually ratified it in a document that we have sent to the Auditor General's Department. That was um, March 2017. March 2017. Yes. The, the ratification was done as far back as Mr. Chair, 2014. before they continue, March 2017, GIJ has no board. No. Uh, please, there was a I mean, uh, I mean, look. I've asked, I've asked the chairman, I respect this committee because I'm a member of parliament. And as at March 2017, we haven't yet chairman reconstituted the GIJ council. As we speak, the membership of that council is with the council of state, waiting for it to get approval that I can constitute the GIJ. And chairman, the reason why I'm making this statement is that people who are supposed to be responsible and know the law and follow the law are the ones who are breaching the law most. And as we go through the GIJ, we'll see a litany of things. Honorable Minister, I don't want to read you that you are disagreeing with the officers that you came here with. Please, no, I'm not no, disagreeing. I'm no, setting no, the record straight. So, I so, said that's at March. So, so then, then allow the committee to do its work. Okay. We can disagree with him, but please don't show it openly for us to see. Don't show it for us to see. I'm saying that he is a minister. He is a head. He is bringing them here. So if you disagree with him, don't show it here as if the two of you, the two of you, uh, that, 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 is a, that is the issue for the committee. The answer the rector gave, he didn't uh, talk about whether the Mr. board Chairman, had been in existence or not. I was saying he said that the responses of this were sent to the Auditor General in March. Let's, let's, let's hear from the rector. Mr. Chairman, the schedule of allowances ratified by the governing council was in January 2014. 
and it includes that of the executive money board, which actually ratified what was wrongfully captured as salary supplement. But when we have the management letter dated 21st February 2017, to which we, re which we received on March 9, 2017, we added this document in our response to the Auditor General. That was what I meant. Even though it was previously captured in the, during the audit between 2009 and 2012. Follow-up question. Mr. Chairman, I would like to find out from the Rector his salary, in which currency denomination is it paid? This is a chairman in Ghana cities. But why is the allowance computed in dollars? Mr. Chairman, I would like the acting finance director to answer that question. Because uh, personally, as at the time, even though I have to take all the assets and liabilities, I was not the director at that time. But he was there as the officer. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, when we uh, migrated from the Ministry of Information to Education, uh, we had the schedule of allowances from the various public universities. And this was one of the allowances that was uh, being paid. So we incorporated it into our schedule of allowances. So and we were paying it uh, uh, in, in 2008 when the Minister of Finance asked for our budget. So when we presented, they said, well, the NCT had given it the approval to start paying those allowances, but the Ministry of Finance hadn't approved it. So subsequently, it was ratified by the Ministry of Finance per their letter dated 7 February 2008, and subsequently, we were paying it. But it is not, it was captured uh, under the universities, uh, public universities, it was a dollar, but we were not paying the dollar. It was the dollar uh, uh, equivalent. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. Uh, before I proceed, I think uh, I have been caught by conflict. I have to disclose that I have joined their convocation. So if you you so that it doesn't appear, I'm 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 a part time. I do galamse. I'm to do galamse. So I just want to disclose so, that. So you lecture. Uh, at the school. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, uh, you do part time. Just, yeah. What subject? Yes, what subject? Oh, Mr. Chair, you want all that it's contract right. negotiation? It's just contract negotiation. Yeah, yeah, just this, uh, Mr. Chair. That's who, who approved your? Oh, I've attended. Uh, I've, at, I've interview. Um, yes, I've passed my 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 office for holding. Since when? Yeah. Oh, we've done our. We Since when our did home. you start? Did you join? Oh, it's September. It's September. taken. Yes, I'm disclosing. Okay. Yes, I'm yet to. You are here to okay, yes, good. It's September. It's September, okay. Yes, September fourth, I think. So I'm just disclosing. So you All right. So you, you give me the dispensation to proceed. Everybody right. Engaged in <laughs> 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 Mr. I hope this one will we, we, we don't need any bulldozer. Mr. Chair, this is <laughs> excavating <laughs> <laughs> the ground. <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, the rector says that um, in January, the council did the ratification. So what I want to know is that that council, uh, whose tenor expired in 2013, according to him, was a very council that had a renewed mandate and did the ratification. Is that the case? Mr. Chairman, there was a new council and their tenure expired November 2016. We don't have a council as the minister. All right. So, um, just to land on that, 
So um, if the council's tenure expired in November 2016, and correct me if I'm wrong, and you have tended, no, you have relied on a document to say that there was a ratification in January 2017. Ratification in January 2014 of a decision that was taken in 2013. 2012, when there was a council. Mr. Are, you, are, you, are you saying that that decision at the time it was taken, uh, there was no counsel? Mr. Chairman, <coughs> excuse me. There was a counsel, and the audit report covered 2009 to 2012. So it means that after 2008, there was no audit. So the audit took place between 2009, covered 2009 to 2012. Even though there was a council, there was no audit until 2012 when the audit was carried out. So within four years, there was no audit until 2012, between 2009. No, no, it's not about the audit. You see, um, you talked about ratification. Meaning a decision taken, whichever body did not have the mandate to take that decision, upon regularization or upon a properly constituted council, that decision had to be regularized. So just be, think of that direction. I'm asking that at the time the decision was taken, was there a council? And if there was a council, what stopped management from making a referral to the council. If there was no council, just say so, and there's no problem. Uh, Mr. Chair, there was a council. Uh, so, Chair, is it your case that the management, although there was a council, and if you look at your enactment. Honorable Martin, Chair. You realize I've given you ample time. Yes, I'm just, just like you're just flowing. So if I stop you, uh, uh, don't, chairman, don't blame me. Chairman, in fact, I won't complain. But chairman is relevant. If you look at your man, the mandate of council, um, governing council section section four, and then if you look at section five, the functions are there. Manage and initiate policies for the institute, ensure the implementation and achievement of the object of the institute. And in fact, if you look at section three, a four, the governing council is made up of the rector of the institute. If you look at the rector is a member, SRC rep is a member, academic board rep is a member, convocation has a member, there. So I just want to know why you had a council at the time, yet no decision, no referral was made to the council, and it took another two years before a new council, because 2014, you had a new council, and they had to come and ratify a decision which was taken when there was a properly constituted council, and it was never brought to the attention until a new one was reconstituted. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairman. Uh, Honorable Chairman, the various allowances uh, are usually budgeted and sent to the council for approval, and this was done. It was, the audit was actually carried out in 2013. The 2009 to 2012 audit was carried out in 2013. And the report even, the report even came, the report even came in, in January 2016. This is the management letter that came in January 2016. And we responded to all these things. So that was why when the income and expenditure was approved and it was budgeted for and approved by the council, as we said, it was the narration of these payments that was the problem. So when the auditors raised the issue, we explained to them that actually it wasn't a salary supplement. 
but it was a sitting allowance that was paid quarterly to the executive management board members. So, Mr. Honorable Chairman, this was what will happen. So, it was subsequently now ratified just to redesignate the allowance in the 2014. Mr. Chair, it is not the audit. Uh, Mr. De Acting Finance, uh, please, uh, with the greatest respect, pay attention to the question. Rector has explained to us that as of 2012, you had a regularly constituted council. In the same year, a decision was taken without referral to council. Do you agree to that point? He is, he is also told the committee that 2013, the council at the time had its mandate terminated. Now, in 2014, you had a new council. In your submission, your, your, your evidence is that you brought this decision to the attention of the new council to ratify, question is, why didn't that previous council take that decision or do the ratification within the period it existed? That is the question. Honorable Chairman, as I explained, you see, the audit was carried out in 2013. And this was where the issue was raised. So that was in addressing it, it was then sent to the new council in 2014. As I said, even the report, the monument letter came, the 2009 to 2012 audit, monument letter came in 2016, January. So but by then, because of the preliminary observations, they were addressed. They were addressed, and it was subsequently now forwarded to the council in 2014, which they subsequently ratified. I think, that, I think that, that's, yeah, that's, okay. That's, that's okay. That's, that's okay. That's yeah, Honorable yeah, Minister. Mr. So Chairman, uh, before we continue, um, I am at a loss if he says the management letter came in 2016, how it could have been ratified, issues out of that audit could have been ratified in 2014. And I also want a, a, a guidance. Is it that if somebody does something illegal, two years down the line, somebody comes to ratify those things? Because I don't know, maybe the committee accepts those things, but I, I don't understand. If it was illegal in 2012, 2014 council cannot ratify. They can change practice going forward, but I don't know, because it's becoming a lot on other boards that we would see. The auditors have complained that um, some donations were made to your institute, and these were not properly captured. That is paragraph 905 of the auditor's report. <clears throat> it says that we noted during our physical inspection that 20 packets of roofing sheets said to have been donated by NADMO packed at the school were not covered by any document aside the letter appealing for the assistance. A further investigation disclosed that the roofing sheets were packed because they did not meet the specification required for the roofing of the lecture hall. My question is, since these roofing sheets did not meet the specifications, what happened to them? Were they returned to NADMO or what? Or they were filtered? Mr. Chairman, um, <clears throat> let me state that in the management later, to us first gen covering 1st January 2013 to 31st December 2015 audit, all those issues were cleared. If they were clear, why are they then still on uh, the books of the Auditor General? Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, because the, we responded to those issues in the previous month being later. So, uh, with documentation, which we have again attached to the document that we sent to this honourable committee, you will still find those attached. But they've been cleared in the in the 2015 audit. Let, let me let me, let me come in. Uh, can we have confirmation from the uh, auditor general if you have uh, received those, and then if we have cleared them. If you have not. 
We will ask them to submit them to you to look at. Yeah, yeah. The chairman, um, this is a direct audit. We audit we do the audit by ourselves. Uh, but currently, I don't have the, the, the status report on the 20. Uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 14, 15, yeah, accounts here. So I'll, I'll, can, I'll check from the office and get back to you. Thank you. But you can see that. So can you do that for the committee? Um, I'll send somebody right now within the week. Uh, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm grateful. Thank you. Chairman, I'm going to be making references to paragraphs 885 all the way through to paragraph 893. I'll read 885. In a related development, we noted that the underlisted salary related allowances were paid to the accountant of the institute, who is on secondment from the Controller and Accountant General's Department and receives his salary from the Controller and Accountant General's Department. And, Chairman, these are the additional payments made to him by the institute professional allowance, head of department allowance, acting allowance, off campus allowance, responsibility allowance rent allowance, and entertainment allowance. Mr. Chairman, in addition to collecting his salary, it means that he took all of those allowances amounting to a total of 170,000 Ghana CDs, 810, and 36 Ghana Pesos. I want to find out from Mr. Matas Dugo, as accountant from the Control and Accountant General's Department, is this standard practice for staff of Controller and Accountant General's Department on secondment. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Yes, per the functions of the Controller and Accountant General as the Chief Accounting Officer of the Republic order, of Ghana. Order, order, order. He posts staff to various ministry departments and agencies and MMDAs. And it is only the basic salary that is paid at the Controller and Accountant General Department. But when you are posted to any ministry department or an agency or MMDA, depending on the conditions that are prevailing there with regards to allowances, that is what is usually paid to the staff. So the, that is exactly what the, the my basic salary was being paid by the controller and accountant general headquarters. But the allowances, there are no allowances attached to the basic salary. So, these are the allowances that were being paid at the Ghana Institute of Journalism, Honorable Chairman. I'm going to have a follow-up. <laughs> my my, my follow-up is going to refer to the findings of the Auditor General, both in the second part of paragraph 886 and paragraph 890. You took a professional allowance, but the Auditor General found out that you're not a chartered accountant, and so you are actually not qualified to take a professional allowance. Secondly, on, in paragraph 890, when a check was done with the Controller and Accountant General and the National Council for Tertiary Education, response from the two departments stated that the officer is entitled to only top-up allowance, only the top-up allowance. And even that is when there is a difference in salary between what the agency you've been seconded to and the Controller and Accountant General, there's a disparity. And Controller and Accountant pays a lower salary than what that institution is offering. Clearly, the salary allowances you took, professional allowance, head of department allowance, acting allowance, off-campus allowance, responsibility allowance, rent allowance, and entertainment allowance, clearly there is a setting level of disparity here. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Honorable Chairman, the professional allowance here is not referring to professional allowance like accountant, doctor, or Otherwise, it is the allowance for senior members that is now upon the migration onto the single yeah. side. That is Mr. now the term as, as, as. Wait, wait. So. Yes, but the, the will, will, allow, will you allow the, the, the witness to give us his response before we react? Thank you, Honorable Chairman. The public universities have an allowance that was called professional allowance before the single spine. That is what was migrated onto the single spine as market premium. But it is not meant for professional allowance like accountants. All senior members are entitled to that allowance. And I, and I, I can even testify that 
uh, staff that I was supervising at GIJ were being paid this allowance. It is not meant for professional allowance. But that was how it was then. When you look at the public universities' uh, salary, uh, 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 allowances schedule, that is how it was captured under the allowances schedule. Mr. Chairman, and we explained it. It was, it was, it was also clear in the 2015 audit. Mr. Chairman, again, as another follow-up to this answer, if you read paragraph 892 of the report, the Auditor General says, and, and this is based on your answer that these are allowances for senior members, 892 says, we did not see any approval of the board approving the officer's status as a senior member. Besides, the officer is not an employee of the institute. So on what basis do you refer to yourself as a senior member? Thank you, Honorable Chairman. As the finance officer at that time, I was a management, a executive management board member. And so I was a senior member. You, use the mic, please. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. So I was a senior member. I was part of the executive management board as the finance officer. So, Honorable Chairman, so I was part of the executive management board member. So I was therefore a senior member. Uh, can, can I just ask another question? This 170,000 Ghana cities that we're talking about, that is the total payment that has come to Mr. Matthias Dugo. Over what period of time was this, was this money, did this money accrue? Thank you, Honorable Chairman. As the audit uh, stipulated, it was for 2009 to 2012 audit. That is the, the, the period for which the audit was carried out. So it was for 2009 to 2012. That's a period of four years. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. All right. My final question, Chairman. I want to find out now from the rector. Paragraph 893 of the report, which is the Auditor General's report, states that there has been no, based on the responses gotten from your accountant, they, they do not believe, as the Auditor General of Ghana, that he was entitled to 170,000 Ghana cities and over. And so that money should be refunded to chest. Uh, I, I want to believe that at this point in time, they may even be wanting to look at, based on the Supreme Court ruling, interest and all of that. The question, Sir Chargent, the question is, what steps has management taken to recover the money based on the Auditor General's report? Mr. Chairman, um, in the 2015 audit, based on the representation, that is responses and documentation that was forwarded to the Auditor General Department, they have cleared the officer. Uh, let, me also, let me also state that the Control and Accountant General Department, if I crave your indulgence to read that, just the second paragraph, the second and third says, Mr. Dugwa's staff is paid by the department, that's the controller. He, like other staff of your institute, is entitled to any allowances that are pertaining to the discharge of his responsibilities at the Institute of Journalism. However, he's not entitled to any salary difference department has staff that can meet your needs or something. So, but he's paid like any other staff of the institute in terms of allowances. Honorable, honorable members, I think that uh, you are done. No question from you. I think that we earlier on asked the Auditor General to verify these issues and then report back to the committee. The uh, Deputy Auditor General promised that he will call and get uh, confirmation for us. If you have any information, please give us. If you don't have, then we'll give you time to give us the information. Thank you.